Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to complete a radar plot. So for radar plotting the first thing we need is the plotting sheet which consists of the radar screen and a scale along the side. We're going to determine a couple of things in advance. We're going to be doing a 12 minute plot and our own vessel is going to be doing 10 knots going 0, 0, 0, so due north. This means our own vector is going to be 2 miles long as measured on our scale because in 12 minutes at 10 knots we would have travelled 2 miles and then we're going to place it in the centre of the screen pointing due north. This just represents our own true vector. The screen itself we're going to take is roughly 6 miles it's give or take a little bit just because of the dimensions of the screen though but yeah we're going to call this a 6 mile plot as well. So as soon as we receive our first echo, we can't really determine much. All we know is the range and bearing of the target vessel. We need to continue to monitor to find more information. Then we find the next point. Again, we haven't quite got enough here. We're really working on scanty information at the moment. There's not enough to complete the plot. And then finally, 12 minutes after the initial plot, we get our third plot. So each of these plots is six minutes apart. The full range is 12 minutes as we previously said. So all we're going to do to immediately find the CPA is we can join a line straight through the middle. And in this particular example the closest point of approach is zero. If we do nothing there will be a collision. Now to find out how long until that collision we need to measure a couple of distances. This first distance here we need to find out how far the target vessel has travelled in the 12 minutes we've been plotting it. All we do, transpose that onto the scale, and we see in the last 12 minutes, target vessel has moved 1.5 miles relative to us. Then, we need to find the distance that the target vessel has got to go from its final position until it reaches us. Again, we're going to transpose this onto the side scale and measure up to find it's about 3.3 miles. To work out how long it's going to take to travel that, we need to do a ratio between these. The ratio of 3.3 to 1.5 will be the same as the time to go to 12. And we simply lay it out like this. All we do is we move the 12 to the other side, simple algebra here, to find the time to the closest point of approach. And running that through the calculator, rounding off to the nearest minute, we get 26 minutes. We can start writing these down the side. So our CPA, as we've said, is 0, and our time to the closest point of approach is 26 minutes. There's a couple more bits of information we need. The next ones are going to be the target vessel's course and speed. This is where vectors start to come into play. What we're going to do is we're going to start to label up parts of the diagram. We're going to call the first plot we received O. The reason for this is it's the original plot. It's the original position the vessel was in when we first saw it. The next point we're going to call A because at the time of this plot that is the actual position of the vessel that's the last plot we received they are actually there then we're looking for the other point W now W to me doesn't really stand for anything apart from labeling the vectors themselves and to find W what we want to do is move our own vector pointing towards the O and then the bottom of our vector becomes the W the way to remember this is W to O is the way of your own vessel. W is going to be the point where we're doing all our vectors from and O being the original position of the target vessel. To find this course and speed of the other vessel we simply want the vector going from W to A and we label that WA which is way of another vessel and simply the vector joins the two together. Now as we know from maths vectors are a component of range or distance and bearing or speed and bearing otherwise it would just be a measurement but no a vector contains more information so to find out the target's course we'll transpose that vector to the middle extend it out to the edge and we can simply read off the edge of the diagram to determine their course in this case it's 303 degrees to find their speed all we're going to do is measure the length of that vector and we find it's about 1.1 miles they've done that 1.1 miles in 12 minutes now of course to get 12 minutes to an hour 
you multiply by 5, so we times both by 5 to get 5.5 knots. Now we've found their course and speed. The next things we want to find are the bearing at the closest point of approach and the aspect. Now in this particular example, where the closest point of approach is zero, there is no bearing. So that one is actually irrelevant. If the closest point of approach was, say, a mile, then we'd want the bearing to where the vessel would be when they were one mile off us. We will cover that when we look at a more advanced plot. And the final thing we want is the aspect. Now the aspect's a little bit tricky because of all the workings out we've done on the screen so far, we actually want to change things up a little bit. And all we're going to do is move the target vessel's vector onto their actual position. Now if you look at this, this looks actually exactly like a normal radar screen, where we've got a relative motion plot, where relative to us all the dots are moving, but the vectors are true vectors. We've got our own true vector and the target vessel's true vector. Now the aspect is going to be the bearing we are from the target vessel. So to find that, all we're looking for is the angle between their heading, or their course, and the bearing to us. And we can either measure that directly from this position, or we can transpose their heading to the centre and extend the lines out where we've got a nice gauge of degrees around the edge. And all we want is the difference between these. Now you'll note that the bottom line doesn't quite go through 225, where it should. This is just because of the dimensions of my diagram. But we know it's the reciprocal of the bearing we've been detecting the, the target, so it should actually be 225. So to find this out, all we do is 303 minus 225, and we get 78 degrees. Now we know we're on their port side, so we're just going to label that as red 78 degrees. Now, after all that, we've completed the plot. Completing the plot simply means finding the closest point of approach, time to the closest point of approach, target vessel's course and speed, their bearing when they're at the closest point of approach, and their aspect. In other diagrams it would be more difficult to find these, and we might have a CPA that's not quite zero. Now to confirm all this, let's just swap it out from a radar plot, and look at the overview of the vessel situation. We can see there's two vessels, both moving ahead, but they're on a steady bearing, so risk of collision exists. So of course we know from the collision regulations the action to take is the red vessel is going to come round to starboard and then both vessels will be clear to continue until they're finally passed and clear. In further episodes we'll be looking at making those course alterations on a radar plot, what happens if we make a speed alteration, and we're just going to be looking at radar plots more in general. Hopefully you found this introduction to radar plotting useful however, if you have, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you want to keep up to date with more of my videos, just hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye.